Welcome to Honest News. Thank you for your support, Honest News Network. There's a great deception in the land today that is doing everything to deny the power of God. And the worst offenders of this, in my opinion, are the Baptist Church, teaching that the gifts of God are not for today teaching that the supernatural gifts of God are not for today, um, teaching that you should just be quiet, it should just be really humdrum, you know, you shouldn't get too excited, to the degree that they're changing the Word of God, uh, adding to the Word of God, so that they can quiet people down. And it's it reminds me of the the Pharisees, when they told Jesus to quiet his disciples, when they were crying out, Hosanna in the highest, and the high priest and the, the, uh, the Pharisees, they were angry that the people were rejoicing. And that's the way it is today. Now, there are those that go to the extreme of noise that's just noise, which is like Hillsong and all that, but then you have those like the Baptists that say, quiet, no noise, right? No sound. But I want to teach you that God says, make a joyful noise, right? Make a joyful sound. Uh, there's a difference between a joyful noise and just noise. I hear a lot of noise today, but there's not a whole lot that's glorifying God. I may know that. We're going to listen to a clip of a Baptist minister that's saying something that is so completely contrary to the Scripture. After we share this with you, we're going to uh, return and share with you the truth about what he is talking about. And he even wrote a book on this. And I guess it's become a bestseller from what he's saying. But we're going to learn the truth about the golden bells and the pomegranates on the hem of the high priest robe. So let's go ahead and listen to this audio or this uh, video clip first. In the Old Testament, the high priest was told... Around your robe will be a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate. The pomegranates were made out of cloth to keep the bells from clanging together. The Apostle Paul said that if you had the gifts without the fruit of the Spirit, you become a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. What? Is that really the truth? Were the pomegranates made of cloth, like this deceiver is saying, absolutely not. They were not made of cloth. In fact, the pomegranates, as you will learn, there's nothing about cloth in the scripture. What they would do is they would take the pomegranates and dry them, and dry them out so that they became very dry. In other words, these were pomegranates from the previous season because the pomegranates grow between October and, you know, in the, towards the end of the year. And so these would be pomegranates that were from the previous year, first of all. And secondly, these are pomegranates 
that are dried out so that when they would hit up against the bells, there would be a sound. Are you listening? If what this liar is saying here, this false teacher is saying is true, then why does the scripture say that his sound shall be heard? What was the sound? Obviously, something's making noise, right? There's a sound. Okay, so let's go to the scripture. Before actually we go into the scripture, let's go ahead and open in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us truth. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to be taught what man is saying today, Lord, but we can learn from that anointing that you've given to us, Lord, that same anointing that was upon you when you was here upon this earth in your ministry. Lord, that that same anointing will teach us all things, lead and guide us into all truth, Lord. We ask that you bless and anoint as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Exodus chapter 28, verse 33. And beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof and bells of gold between them round about. Now, do you see anything there that says anything about cloth? Anything about pomegranates being made of cloth? I don't. A golden bell and a pomegranate. A golden bell and a pomegranate. Upon the hem of the robe round about. Okay. What's the purpose of the golden bells and the pomegranates? And it shall be upon Aaron to minister. And his sound. Did you hear that, folks? And his sound. So what's this idea where this Baptist minister is teaching that the, these pomegranates were made of cloth so there wouldn't be a sound? You see the deception here? These are the same ones that say you shouldn't be speaking in tongues. That was for them back there. See, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of God. And the Bible tells us from such, turn away. It shall be upon Aaron to minister, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord. Listen, when he goes in to the holy place, there's a sound. And when he cometh out, that he die not. So there's a sound the whole time that the, minister, that the high priest is ministering. Are you listening, folks? It's very important to understand this. Because there are those today that would like to quiet the sound. The sound of the Holy Ghost. The sound of what the Lord is doing. In fact, even as I'm ministering to you right now, there are those outside this building right now, outside this window, making noise. They're blowing leaves and, and getting uh, the leaves taken care of because the snow's getting ready to come. And that's just noise, right? There's nothing uh, joyful or enjoyable about listening to that sound. In fact, it's a distraction. It's trying to distract this minister right now. But the sound that the bells and the pomegranates made were distinct sounds. And what was the purpose of the bells and the pomegranates? Notice what it says. It's so that they would know that he was alive. See, if the high priest had gone into the holy of holies to minister, the holy place to minister, and he went in unworthily, he would die in the presence of God. And how would the people know that he was in there dead? 
the, the, they wouldn't hear the bells and the pomegranates for a long period of time. Are you listening? That's how we know today that the church is dying, that the church has no life, because the sound is going away. We don't hear that sound anymore, that distinct sound that Jesus Christ is in the holy of holies in heaven. See, there was a sound according to Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Let's look at this verse. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound, hallelujah, from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And what happened when this was noised abroad? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Cloven tongues, people. What's that called inside the bell? It's called a tongue. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see the type being fulfilled? This is a type being fulfilled. Jesus had gone into heaven to be with the Father, but he said, I'm sending the comforter to you. He says, if I go not away, he says, I cannot send you him. I can't send you the comforter. Amen. When the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, that's letting us know that the Christ, that Jesus, the great high priest, is in heaven. Hallelujah. He's alive. Glory to God. Every time the Holy Spirit moves upon you and you're speaking in other tongues, praise God, that's to signify that Jesus Christ is alive. You see why the devil doesn't want folks to speak in the real tongue? He doesn't want them to make a joyful noise. Do you know why the devil doesn't want the sound of the true and the genuine? Because he doesn't want folks to know that Jesus Christ is victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and that he's alive. Glory to God. Oh, praise the Lord. There was a sound when Jesus went in. But how many know there's a sound when he comes out? Oh, glory to God. He's coming again. Glory to God. I said, Jesus is coming again. Exodus 39 and verse 25 says, And they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe round about between the pomegranates. Listen, a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate round about the hem of the robe to minister in as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, you see in the Old Testament that God instructed them to make the high priest's garment so, right? that God was the one that inspired the pomegranate, the golden bell, the pomegranate, the golden bell, so that there would be a sound that the high priest was alive, right? Praise God. Well, how many know there's only one other place in the Bible? Oh, I feel the presence of God. There's only one other place in the Bible that we see these golden bells. Zechariah chapter Zechariah chapter 14, verse 20. Listen. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses. Anybody hear that? In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Do you know what this is describing? It's when the saints return with the Lord on white horses. Are you listening? 
There's, oh, I feel the presence of God. There's going to be a sound again. Oh, yeah, he's coming. The Lord is coming. And there's going to be a sound, brothers and sisters, beyond the sound of Pentecost. He's coming again. The fullness. The Lord is coming. This idea today that just turn down the volume. Don't make so much noise, Brother Joe. Don't get so excited. That's what they said when they were crying Hosanna in the highest. As Jesus was riding upon a donkey coming into Jerusalem. Just quiet your disciples down. They're making too much noise. But they'll make all kinds of noise with their foolishness, right? But you can't make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And certainly don't let the Holy Ghost speak through you with other tongues. Amen. Don't let God move. Don't let God have his way. Don't let the Holy Ghost have his way. That's what they're saying today. Oh, they, what, what are these people doing? Isn't that what they said on the day of Pentecost? These, these men are drunk. These people are strange. These people are weird. But they think nothing of all the yickety yak and all the noise they make. Think about all the noise the world makes today. And even the charismatics, even these Hillsong meetings and all the noise. But you worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And that's noise. That's that's a noise they don't want to hear. Why? Because it convicts them that there is truly a living Christ. Oh, hallelujah. There's a conviction that comes, praise the Lord, when there's truth being preached, when the Holy Ghost is moving, hallelujah. There is fire. Oh, listen, brothers and sisters. There is judgment. There is glory. Hallelujah. Quiet, Brother Joseph. Don't get so excited. Don't get so excited, Brother Joseph. Let's replace those pomegranates with some cloth, like you see there in the picture. Let's just replace those pomegranates. We don't need those dried pomegranates that with the outer hard shell and, and those seeds on the inside to make a noise. Oh, if we ever needed God, people, if we ever needed the sound of heaven again, if we ever needed a move of God, a genuine Holy Ghost move of God, a revival, we need it now. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. How many know this was just the earnest on the day of Pentecost? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound. Is anybody listening to this preacher? What did it say in Exodus? It says... So when the high priest was ministering, it says, it shall be upon Aaron to minister and his sound. In the Old Testament, Aaron's a type of Jesus Christ, the great high priest, and his sound shall be heard when he goeth in unto the holy place before the Lord and And, are you getting it, people? And when he cometh out, that he die not. When he cometh out. Jesus is coming again. Oh, praise the Lord. I said, Jesus is coming again. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Have you truly experienced Pentecost, brothers and sisters? They say, oh, well, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, not everybody speaks in other tongues. That's not what I see. That's not what I see. They all were filled with the Holy Ghost in the upper room, and they all spake with new tongues. Don't believe the lie to today, people. Don't believe the, the, the lies of the devil. Don't believe that. 
That signifies Jesus is alive in you. Amen. Not only live in heaven, but that he has come into your heart. You've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Signifying that Jesus Christ is alive, the great high priest. He's not only in heaven. Amen. But he's in your heart and he's ministering to you. Amen. Keeping that light burning in you. That's the job of the high priest. He was the one that ministered. Amen. And kept the light burning. Oh, listen to me, brothers and sisters. If Jesus doesn't keep you burning, nobody can only he can do it only he can do it the great high priest only he can keep you burning only he can keep you alive praise the Lord today they're talking about a counterfeit fire a counterfeit illumination it's counterfeit people, but there is a genuine. There is a real. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Some are returning with the Lord in that sound from heaven. Are you listening? Oh, listen. That was just the earnest on the day of Pentecost. But the fullness is coming in that day. Shall there be upon the bells of the horses? Holiness unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to his name, people. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Listen to this. Revelation 19, verse 11. John says, and I saw heaven opened. Heaven opened, folks. Where'd that sound come from? And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. This is the same word that became flesh, amen. Praise the Lord. Listen to this, people, listen. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, white and clean. Are you listening? They're following him on white horses. Where are the golden bells, brothers and sisters? Zechariah is a prophecy of the end of the world, the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses. Are you listening? Holiness unto the Lord. The Lord is coming with ten thousands of his saints as Enoch prophesied. Are you going to be with him? There's another sound coming. The high priest went into the Holy of Holies. Amen. Before Pentecost. And he's been ministering in the Holy of Holies. But now he's coming out of the Holy of Holies. He's coming again. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters. And there's a sound coming. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in the book of Joel, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters, they shall prophesy. Glory to God, brothers and sisters. The Lord is coming with 10,000 of his saints hallelujah praise the lord there's no devil in hell amen that can stop that sound he would like to the devil would like to get the religious of this day to stop the sound quiet down oh we don't want to make too much noise and they try to manipulate people saying oh well you know Paul talked about tinkling cymbals and sounding brass and those that had noise, but they had no fruit. 
Yeah, but Paul never said anything about the pomegranates being made of cloth. You devil, you liar, you deceiver. They weren't made of cloth. That's what the, that's what the uh, rabbis, that's what the Zionists are teaching. That's what the, those that call themselves Jews today, and they're not. They're the synagogue of Satan. Are you listening? That's what the Freemasons are teaching. That's what the secret society is teaching. Oh, these were cloth pomegranates. These are the same ones that replaced the light of Jesus Christ and the true gospel with Hanukkah, with the lighting of a candle. Listen, brothers and sisters, don't be deceived. There's only one gospel. There's only one gospel. There's only one faith. There's only one spirit. There's only one. Hallelujah. There's not another gospel. There's not another Jesus. There's not another spirit. There's only one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are those that are perverting the gospel of Jesus Christ today. But listen to me. They've got a form of godliness, but they deny the power. They deny the power of God. Amen. Turn them away. Turn them away. Hallelujah. Get away from them. Amen. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and I will receive you. They're liars, they're deceivers. There is a sound, a distinct sound. Amen. Paul says, if the trumpet doesn't make a distinct sound, he says, how will they know to prepare for battle? <sighs> Hallelujah. This here we're talking about today is the sound of life. Did you hear what I said? This is the sound of life that Jesus is alive. Is he alive in you? When's the last time you spake in other tongues? When's the last time the Holy Ghost spoke through you? Amen. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Amen. The Bible tells us that we're supposed to pray in the Spirit, building ourselves up in the Holy Ghost, uh, praying in other tongues as the Spirit gives us the utterance. Brothers and sisters, we don't understand what's being said. Oh, but listen, God's giving you a download. Amen. God's giving you something while he keeps that natural man busy. Amen. With the, be with the bells, with the, with the tongue, God is feeding your spirit with revelation. Amen. My pastor one afternoon was getting ready to turn the radio off. He was listening to a, t a radio show, Rush Limbo or something, and he went to turn off the radio. The show was ending, and, and the Holy Ghost told him, turn it back on or leave it on. That's what it was. Leave, leave it on. Leave the radio on. He was getting ready to turn it off. His program was over. And all of a sudden, they started talking about subliminal messages. And the Holy Ghost told my pastor, he said, that's why I gave tongues to the church. To keep the conscious man busy while I fellowship with the inner man. You see, that flesh, that natural man tries to get in the way. Are you listening? It tries to get in the way. It tries to quench the Holy Spirit. That flesh, amen, that flesh fallen nature does not want you to be filled with the Holy Ghost, does not want you to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. That flesh doesn't want to die. That flesh does not want to be judged. Oh, but listen, brothers and sisters, know ye not, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Are you listening? God is a spirit. And they that worship God must worship God in spirit and truth. You can't worship God in the flesh. You can't serve God in the flesh. And that's what this generation's trying to do. They're trying to serve God with a carnal mind. Are you listening? You must be filled with the Holy Ghost, people if you're going to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. I've had times when I'm speaking in other tongues and just minutes, 
Sometimes seconds later, God has given me understanding of things I never understood before. What happened? He was keeping that natural man busy, that conscious man busy while he was feeding the subconscious, the spiritual man, the inner man. Amen? Oh, listen. This is a, this is a secret weapon to the church. That's why the devil keeps you and I from speaking in other tongues. But I want you to understand something. Paul the Apostle said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Amen. There's times where you and I, our inner man, our spiritual man will speak in tongues. But there's times the Holy Ghost will speak in tongues through us. Amen. And there's times when there is a tongue and an interpretation that all may be edified. You see, the devil a long time ago started to try to get God's people to be quiet. That's what's going on in the church today. Just be quiet. I remember times when the Holy Ghost would come upon me, brothers and sisters, and I knew God wanted me to stand up and I knew God wanted to use me. Amen. My whole body would begin shaking. Amen. Under the power of God. But I was afraid to open my mouth because of what man might say. But brothers and sisters, it's time for you to obey God and stop quenching the Holy Spirit. Don't quench the Holy Spirit any longer. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. There's many churches today that are quenching the Holy Spirit, grieving the Holy Spirit right out of the church. Are you listening? Some churches used to be on fire with the power of God, demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. But then the flesh took over because people stopped spending time on the altar. They stopped putting their flesh on the altar. So now they don't even speak in other tongues anymore. When's the last time you spoke in other tongues? When's the last time you worshiped God in spirit and in truth? Listen to me, brothers and sisters. This is not my message. This is God. God is speaking. He's coming, people. Amen. Oh, listen. He's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But how many know his bride's not, he's not coming for his bride. Even as we see in the Old Testament, Abraham sent out Eliezer, his servant, to get a bride for Isaac. So God the Father, amen, has sent the Holy Ghost into this world to get a bride for Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I go away to prepare for you a place. He said, but I'm coming again. Listen, brothers and sisters, the Holy Ghost is taking out a bride. Oh, hallelujah. Taking out a bride long before Jesus comes again. And long before Jesus comes and sets his feet upon the earth, he's going to come in the middle of the air as a thief in the night, and he's going to take the church out. Hallelujah. Stop quenching the Holy Spirit in your life. Stop grieving the Holy Spirit. Stop being so concerned what man's going to think. Amen. And understand this. God is a God of order. Amen. You should never go into a church and everybody's speaking in tongues at the same time. God's not the author of confusion. Amen. But let me tell you in your own prayer time, your own time with God, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Let God move. Let God have control of your tongue. Let God have control of your heart. Let God have control of you. Amen. Let the Holy Ghost come in. Amen. Become the temple of the Holy Ghost. Let God live in you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I feel his presence, people. I know he's coming soon i know it i know it in my heart when i see prophecy being fulfilled and i see the land of judea being given back to his people 
Oh, hallelujah. And I see all the hypocrisy and I see the modern day Pharisees and the religious system and I see Rome and I see it all the way it was when Jesus was on the earth. And if Jesus was to come in this time, in this day, amen, they would crucify him again. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is coming again, but he's not coming as the lowly Nazarene. He's coming as the lamb in his wrath. He's coming as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's coming with 10,000 of his saints. He's coming in his power and his glory. He's coming again. Praise the Lord. Will you be with him? Will you? You're going to be riding on one of these white horses with bells. Oh, hallelujah. I was listening to one of the messages from the broadcast that we just recently shared, the last message. At the end of the message, just before the end of the message, it's like the Holy Ghost was saying to me, the bells are beginning to ring. Oh, I feel his presence. He's coming. The Lord is coming. Oh, Praise God, yea, Lord. Praise your holy name, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my Lord and my God, I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Yea, did not I say unto thee that when these things come to pass, that when these things begin to come to pass, saith the Lord, look up. Look up. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Father, God Almighty, I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise your name. Yes, Lord, I hear your voice, Jesus. The Lord is saying, yes, I indeed am preparing a place. Praise you, Jesus. Yes, I have gone away to prepare a place for you. A place where we are one, where I abide in you. And you abide in me. Praise you, Jesus. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, will you let me purge you, saith the Lord? Will you let me sanctify you? Holy? Will you let me cleanse you and make you clean? Will you let me work in your heart, saith the Lord? Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. 
Praise your name, Lord. Will you become my abode, saith the Lord? Will you? Will you allow me to abide in you, to live in you? Praise your name, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. The Lord's bringing a scripture to my memory. Do not fear him who can destroy your body and afterwards cannot do anything. I forewarn you, fear him who can destroy your body and soul in hell. Fear him. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Oftentimes, the Lord would have used you, but you resisted him. You quenched his spirit. Some people can grieve the spirit of God to the point where he won't even work through you anymore. He'll leave you. You say, well, Brother Joseph, the Bible says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. But even David cried out and said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Praise you, Jesus. No, it's not Jesus that leaves people, folks. When the Scripture makes it very clear, thou hast left thy first love. He didn't leave. You left. You left your first love. Amen? The Lord's long-suffering. But you can grieve the Holy Spirit right out of your life where you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit all over again. Amen? How do you know when you're filled with the Holy Spirit? You're not in control anymore. Amen? You're not in control of your own words anymore. When the Holy Spirit comes in, He takes over people. He produces within us the nature of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit. We have not self-control as far as our own self-controlling, but it's the Holy Spirit that restrains us. And He works His own divine nature into us. That's right. So that the fallen nature, the corrupt nature, is replaced with the divine nature. The incorruptible repra- replaces the corruptible. Amen? It's one thing to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's another thing when you let the Holy Spirit come in and renovate and take out the old. Amen. Replace the old with the new. That's what the Lord's doing. He's renovating the temple. He's cleaning. He's cleansing. Because God's holy. Amen. The scripture says, and I'm closing, it says, if you defile the temple, God will destroy you. Amen. We need to take heed, people. We need to take heed. Remember, you're bought with a price. You're not your own. If you defile the temple, God will destroy what's his. He will. You say it can't be. can't happen. It's what the word says. He who defiles the temple, I will destroy, he said. It's time for God's people to realize that God is holy. Amen? That we are to be a separated people. Come out from among them and be separate. Amen. 
Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Rather, reprove them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. We should be looking up, people. That's what we've been preaching for years now. And then you just heard from the Holy Ghost. And there's those that say, oh, well, Brother Joseph, Paul says, let one speak in other tongues and let another interpret. Well, God's very practical, right? If there's just myself here, God can't use this minister in both, speaking in other tongues and interpretation. Don't be foolish. We're all to come to the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. Amen? Praise the Lord. And I will say this to you. Speaking in other tongues wasn't for my benefit. Amen? Praise the Lord. God could have just gave me the words to say, as you saw him do at the end of the message. But he wanted you to hear that sound. Amen? He wanted you to hear that sound, that same sound that they heard at the day of Pentecost. Because there are some that are still filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? There are some. There are a few. Not everyone is sold out. Not everyone is compromised. There are a few Many are called, few are chosen, and even fewer are going to be found faithful. It's going to be his bride. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We've got the power in the name of Jesus, we've got... Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got the power.